Welcome back for Tempo Storm's newest deck introduction on the Ungoro style of Aggro Druid. If you've dabbled in Wild Hearthstone at all in the last year, then you know that far and away, one of the strongest and fastest decks in the meta is Egg Token Druid. While many players have tried to iterate a standard-based counterpart of this wild powerhouse deck, the tools weren't consistent enough during the year of the Kraken. That is, until the introduction of a few of Ungoro's fast and token-friendly additions like Firefly and Eggnapper, as well as the ultimate Aggro Druid finisher of living mana. The archetype has now surged in popularity on the ladder, with numerous top 10 legend appearances on many servers by multiple players like a rank 1 EU legend appearance by Zixo, which is where the deck caught fire around the world. The strategy behind Aggro Druid is fairly straightforward. You're looking to develop a strong board as early as turn 1. From this powerful board, you proceed to snowball into an overwhelming position as early as turns 2 and 3. The mulligan priority should be to favor 1-drop openers like Argent Squire, Enchanted Raven, or Blood Sail Course. Share. If you've got a turn one play secured in your mulligan options, then you can start to anticipate how you'll curve out and develop the board as the game progresses. Generally, if you have a few early minions, then your next priority is to find a cheap buff card, like Mark of the Lotus, Power of the Wild, or if the situation seems viable, Mark of Yasharaj. Unlike aggro decks like Pyro Warrior, in an aggro druid, if you lose the board, you almost completely lose the capacity for face damage. For this reason, it's very important to manage your value trades and board resilience. Consider what chip damage to face is possible on all turns, but but the priority is to make your board resistant to the opponent's possible answers. If this is managed carefully, then cards like Defender of Argus, Living Mana, and Savage Roar will carry you to victory. In the wild iteration of this deck, access to Jeeves, Sir Finley Murgleton, and Soul of the Forest give the deck incredible sustain potential, allowing victories to be assembled very late into the game. In standard, with the exception of Finja the Flying Star and Mark Yasharaj, which are both super conditional, the deck contains no resource generation or cycle. This makes standard token druid a true aggro deck, and the outcome of a game is usually decided by turn 5. The upside here is that aggro druid makes for quick games, and can pull off crazy win streaks during a ladder climb. However, this means that your decisions in the mulligan phase, and in the first few turns, are essential to success. Dropping the wrong minion or making one wrong trade on the first two turns can be game deciding. Also consider the risk reward of playing around an opponent's possible answer to your board. Another great thing about aggro druid is that tech cards can be rotated in without hurting the deck's core synergies and mechanics all that much. Golaka Crawler is an excellent addition that steals the Pirate Warrior matchup, but also offers a decent 2-drop in other matchups. Hungry Crab crushes the dreams of Murloc Paladins, while also offering a 1-drop that isn't terrible in other matchups. And if the time comes for weapon-denying ooze cards, these can fall into the list while still keeping the deck's core strengths intact. Finally, the usage of Mark of the Lotus, Power of the Wild, and Living Mana are essential. These are the matchups where you can afford to be greedy with your token buffs. We're saving Mark of the Lotus for turn 3 because it will buff 3 additional minions, is game winning. There are times where waiting one more turn allows your opponent to wipe your unbuffed board and then you're left with a weak static buff on fewer minions. Living Mana is another card that demands careful consideration. Realize that this card functions a lot like Shaman's Overload because even though you get the mana crystal back for the treants that die, those crystals will be empty. Essentially, if you spend turn 5 playing Living Mana, all 5 of those crystals are unusable on the following turn. A lot of the newer players are beside themselves when they plan to set up a Savage Roar lethal on turn 6 after playing living mana on turn 5, only to realize that they have one full mana crystal to work with on turn 6, and trading out the treants gives them empty mana crystals. The card is a finisher, something you play to finalize your overwhelming board state or to make a last push for board development after the main stage of the game is closed. Aggro Druid stands as the fifth deck from the fifth distinct class that can end a game by turn 5 in the Ungoro meta. What makes this flavor of aggro viable in the continuously changing meta going forward is that it can tech against the other aggro options while not damaging its own overall game plan and strategy. Long story short, this is a fast, powerful, and flexible deck to learn right now and it's going to be viable for the next year of standard going forward. We hope you enjoyed this deck introduction. If you're interested in how this archetype is fitting in with the rest of the meta right now, don't forget to check out our most recent Tempest Storm meta snapshot. As always, please leave a like on this video if you enjoy it and join the discussion in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to stay up to speed with all of Tempo Storm's news and Hearthstone content.